Hello, my name is Florence. Thank you for joining me uh, for this time lapse video. Uh, first off, I just want to acknowledge the fact that I left a uh, slideshow of the reference in the bottom left hand corner while recording this video. This video was recorded on stream over the span of about seven hours on my Twitch stream last night. So um, it, I just forgot to to prevent it from from recording that one aspect of the uh, of the stream itself. However, um, this week's uh, sitter was Leslie Garrett, and she was originally painted by Tom Crofts. So if you want to see um, what he came up with, you should definitely check out his Instagram, and I will include the note for his. Instagram um, once it is available. Um, Leslie Garrett is a English soprano uh, in the opera and um, she was an excellent sitter to watch. Um, she has a lot of expression and she clearly has a lot of background sitting for other people. She had mentioned that she Previously was a model for sculptors and um, and uh, it really does definitely show. She knows to where to set her mark and get back to it. Um, so as a result, we were able to get quite a number of very nice, interesting poses uh, for her. I chose to take a number of different poses and kind of put them together. I liked her eyes in one shot and her mouth in another. So I that's what I chose to incorporate in the sketch. Um, and here you can see that I have uh, just primed the board with a bit of matte medium to seal it off and prevent oil from getting sucked in. I will have to say that I'm not terribly happy with the fact that the sketch itself um, is... It didn't really cut... It, it didn't really end up getting used as well as it ought to have. Um, there are a number of different factors. This particular board is a bit darker than I'm used to, but also I just failed to make the best use of this sketch for a good amount of time, and that actually took up a lot of time uh, when it came to painting this subject. Um, I set up my palette with titanium white, Cadmium yellow uh, medium, uh, alizarin crimson, cadrad hue, uh, ultramarine blue, cadmium blue, cerulean blue, raw umber, raw sienna, or sorry, no, not, uh, burnt sienna, and then also eventually um, cadmium yellow light. And I chose to block in the dark tones here with sort of like a, a dark green. I was kind of aiming for teal because the uh, wallpaper behind her is kind of black with some teal elements in it. But eventually you'll see that I kind of, um, I did darken it and use something else. So at this point, I started blocking in a lot of the darker shadows and being very conscious of the fact that the board was already quite dark and, and much darker than a mid-tone. Um, I ended up, I, I started off with with a, a much brighter uh, skin mid-tone than I usually do and at this point, I was really struggling with the resemblance, so there are areas where I just rubbed everything off and lost all detail and reference from the sketch. So it's at this point where, much for much of the painting, I'm, I'm basically depending on, uh, on the reference just by eye, um, going off of what's um, on a screen. I took a lot of time to land, basically landmark the main areas of her face.
And at this point, I started bringing in a paintbrush as a mall stick a bit more, and that allowed me to uh, work out some of the details um, early on, because I knew that having the glasses establish the structure of her face would also be quite important. From that, I was able to um, more firmly establish the structure of her nose and her um, the the folds around them, uh, as well as the uh, shape of the mouth that I wanted to use. Um, and I started to more firmly develop the shapes of, of, of her cheeks, the apples of her cheeks, and kind of giving more... Um, light and shadow to the corners of her smile and then I'll, of course bringing in her teeth so um for much of the painting like once once uh, b before you add these these details like the whites of the eyes and the teeth and that kind of thing it just kind of feels a little bit off um, but once I was able to kind of bring some of those elements in I felt a little bit better about this piece um, I was also able to start bringing in more detail with the shirt and the hair. And the hair really helped to bring more gestural qualities to the piece that I'm actually quite happy with. They really frame her, her face quite well. From From there on in, basically, I was trying to establish all the smaller, planar qualities. Um, planar, when I, I, I mean like P-L-A-N-A-R. Um, all of the, the planar shapes uh, around her eyes because it was a little bit diff difficult to, to assess from reference to reference just um, what was correct uh, underneath the glass. Of her glasses but by this point I believe I had already passed the four hour mark um, I did not at this point feel like the resemblance was there even though I did feel like uh, the volumes of the human figure were there so I just decided to continue and try to, to modify what I had and make it work to resemble her a bit more. So I, I took this time to just firm up a lot more details, kind of figure out, okay, well, um, also, what is this piece missing? What is throwing me off about it? And as it turns out, it, ha it had to do with the shirt and the background. The background, because I had used a greenish background, it really clashed with the shirt and I just didn't enjoy it. So I used a combination of ultramarine and raw umber and just went to town on the background. So it's really quite dark now. It's almost black but it's kind of like a rich, dark blue, um, but almost black. Like it's, it's not, it's not very saturated. It's just very, very dark. Um, this also gave me the opportunity to bring some more shadows into the hair and scratch out, uh, some aspects, uh, to, to bring in individual strands. And then also paint more highlights back in. And then finally adding more of the details in the eyes. Paying a little bit more attention to the makeup. And also bringing life to those eyes by adding the specular reflections. I also spent a bit more time trying to bring out the the shape of, of her neck at the collar and then establishing more volume with the with the shirt and um, also um, kind of bringing the the redness back to a more reasonable level 
I worked in a bit of alizarin crimson, a bit of raw umber, and a bit of ultramarine blue uh, to use as the shadows for for the shirt. And that seems to have really worked quite a bit. Um, I still, there, there's still definitely some cadmium red in that shirt, but on its own, it just, just screams scarlet and it doesn't really work with the piece as a whole. So that's why I kind of pulled that back a bit. At this point, I'm adding more detail to the glasses uh, and really trying not to pick up any wet paint uh, from underneath, but uh, there was some varied success there. I think in the future, I would probably allow this painting to dry a lot more than like a day or so, or maybe use like a, a cobalt dryer um, to get that that pigment to dry a lot quicker because painting in those specular highlights for the glasses was a bit stressful, I have to say. <laughs> uh, at this point, I'm also scratching in a lot more hair detail and adding um, some brushwork back in. And then also defining some reflections on her glasses on the side, as well as um, some of the specular uh, reflections on her um, on her lips, just to give them a little bit bit of volume. And then just giving the shirt a little bit more definition. And that's where I ended the, the the stream, more or less. I did end up blending the skin tones a little bit more after the fact. But um, that's pretty much where we left it. I'm pretty happy with the result. I'm not 100% sure about the resemblance, I think. I will need to get back to this and kind of... Um, rework it as necessary. I do feel like my rendition of Leslie is not... Uh, I, I do find that it's not the sturdy Leslie that she had described herself to be. I do find that this version uh, has its own biases and also rests on the fact that I did a lot of my painting based on a planar application of, of, uh, of color. Um, and as a result, it really highlights a lot more of the shadows in her face. But overall, I'm happy that I came to where I came to, um, and most of that just has to do with persistence. But yeah, thank you very much for hanging out and, um, checking out the process of my video. If you liked what I've done here, Please do check out my channel and see what other time lasses I've done. Um, you can also check out my website at florencechan.ca. Uh, I can also be found on Instagram and Twitter. All of the details are in the description below. Um, if you enjoyed this, please do click like. Um, and if you want to see more, do hit subscribe. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.